Hey, welcome to Integrators Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. A uh, whole bunch of little things. First off, I just put up two uh, new uh, videos over on Patreon. Uh, matter of fact, I've been getting ready to do them, but I got I got an email uh, from uh, one of my patrons, Tom. And, uh, Tom, I haven't had a chance to get back to you yet. If you're watching this, thank you for your email. He says, I think he's, he's retired, uh, uh, police officer or law enforcement of some type. Um, yeah, I haven't had a chance. Just came over my phone and I've been swamped and I, I'm not sure that I read the entire thing, but he says, Hey, uh, I'm, I check you on, uh, on YouTube and then on Patreon. And, and I thought you were going to put extra stuff on Patreon and I just seeing the same stuff. And, and uh, yeah, I know I was starting to run the uh, combative series over on Patreon and then this coronavirus uh, hit and I've just been swamped. And so I apologize for not getting uh, more up over there, but just put up two and hopefully going to uh, get up uh, one every day or two from here on out. Um, one was on uh, a third on combatives, our uh, Combatives 103, the third segment on that. And, you know, as as things decline in uh, in society, as they're going to with this thing. Um, oops, just touched my nose. That's okay. I'll wash my hands. Um, the the uh, society devolves. Uh, it becomes more dangerous. And you need to be able to know how to defend yourself. And there is no um, replacement for on you know, hands-on learning and training, but uh, over there, I'm going to be given some uh, some information that will be very useful for those who um, who haven't had training in combatives, and and even for some, I've had people who have had uh, quite a bit of training say that they learn a little bit from me, also. So, if you're interested in that, uh, that's over there, and uh, and the other thing I put. Uh, Oop, I touched my eye. I washed my hand. Uh, uh, what was the other one? Oh, yeah. yeah disappointing, uh, discouraging, disturbing, I think I, I said, uh, information regarding the health care delivery system around here. It's information that I don't want to put up here. I'm going to kind of segment that over to Patreon. I'm going to cover a little bit of it here, uh, but not as much as over there. And, and I'm not even going to really get into the reasons for that. It just is what it is. Um, so we may as well start there. Uh, well, let, let me skip over to, to other something first. Now I'll come right back to the medical. Okay, just check the markets. Uh, the markets uh, had, had gone down again below 20000 Uh They opened this morning. I know that at one point they were up uh, 300 which was disappointing, even though, and it's just proof that uh, that the decline is still because you would have expected a larger buy after such a a, a drop, um, and which tells me a couple of things. But that's getting too far into the weeds, and it's not necessary to get into that right now. Um, and then I I checked the uh, the headlines from the news, and and they're all rosy, right? Oh yeah. This means that this means that uh, the president's economic plan and coronavirus relief package is, is implemented and the markets have great hope. It doesn't mean that at all. If it had had that hope, you would have seen a bounce of about a thousand. OK, uh, anyway, right before and remember the 300 and some wasn't good uh, right before I started this. I checked so I could have the latest information and it is up 67. That's the Dow 67 points. That is anemic. What that means is it's going down, down, down. Just refer back to my previous uh, videos, and I, Ed will explain. I don't need to. I don't need to rehash it here. It'll explain kind of what I expect coming uh, economically. Okay. Um, the um, I, I spent a lot of time again talking to people that I know at uh, at hospitals and doctors' offices um, last night. And this morning, um, and all I'm going to say, and, and again, I get into some detail over on Patreon. I'm not going to do it here. Um, all I can say is if you don't have to go to the hospital, don't. Do not. Unless you got a bone sticking out of you or 
or something. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm being, I'm exaggerating there a little bit, but if, if you, if it's not serious, and I don't want to dissuade anybody from going if you really do need emergency care, but, um, and, and, and ER people have said this forever. If you don't need to go in there, don't because hospitals are where people get sick. Okay. Leave it at that. I will use an example, uh, from something that I just read, uh, online in, uh, from Colorado, uh, Colorado, uh, some hospital, I don't recall which one it was, uh, the, the hospital staff, the clinical staff, nurses, doctors are saying that they are short on supplies. They're having that, uh, supplies are being rationed. They're having to reuse masks, gowns, gloves. I think they said, I can't imagine having to use, to, to reuse gloves, but I think they said that could be wrong, but, but I think, uh, I mean, hospitals buy these things by the gazillions, you know, why they would run short. I can't imagine because I don't think it's been going that long to, for the, the, uh, uh, for their, you know, on-site supply to be depleted, but I could be wrong. Anyway, they, they're saying that they're having to use the same mask through an entire shift. Those things are meant to be ditched to the ones that they're wearing. And I think probably the ones they're wearing are, are surgical masks, masks or what they call procedure masks. And, uh, and they don't protect against this stuff at all. Uh, but, but said, but they're meant to be, you know, pretty much one time use. You put it on, you toss it before you go in to see the next person. And they say they're having to, to use the same mask through their entire shift. And you can imagine how many people they are treating during a shift. Okay. This is getting to be some third world stuff. And, and the idea that this would happen in America is beyond belief, even to some of us who, you know, deal in this stuff and have thought of this stuff for years and years. What are the scenarios? What's going to happen? Uh, still, that our supply would be hit like this, or there's another possibility. And, and that is, and, and it's kind of the, the, uh, accusation that these people in Colorado are making that the supply is there, but it's being rationed. Okay. All sorts of, uh, of ideas about that, right? Okay. Okay. So we've, we've covered economics, the Patreon videos, uh, the medical a little bit. Uh, I got up early this morning, went to bed late last night and got up early this morning. Rainy day, so I got up and started going. Um, uh, I let the kids sleep. It's, it's, uh, you know, I remember when I was young and those rare days you just get to sleep and sleep and how great it was. So I got out and I decided I wanted to go out and uh, take a look around and see what was going on in town. Now the, the streets, seemed fairly empty and uh it, it wasn't you know, our grocery store our local grocery store uh we used to be open 24 hours a day and now they've switched their hours to only be open eight in the morning to eight in the evening so i went i drove past there and the parking lot and this was uh, 8 15 maybe the parking lot was crammed just jam-packed now, I don't go there a lot early in the morning, but I have been there, and it wasn't like that. Uh, it was just jam-packed, and, and so I just, I, I, I kind of drove around the parking lot. I looked and to see what was in people's carts, and I thought, well, nobody's buying toilet paper. I guess that's good. I wonder what that means. And uh, and so finally, and, and people were coming out with smaller amounts than they have been over the last, you know, week. Um so I, I, I couldn't resist. I said, I got to do a little recon here. So I put on my mask, parked the car, put on my mask, and I went inside to check. That place was a madhouse. Um, and, and they had shut the stores during the night to restock. So this was soon after they had completely restocked. And, uh, no toilet paper. Uh, canned goods have gone. Uh, the same stuff that, that has been gone. You know, pasta's empty, pasta sauce is empty, north sides are empty. Um, and, and we're start, I'm starting to see those secondary items that people don't really think of as emergency food when they need it. They're starting to get short too. 
Uh, probably the most amazing thing that I saw was that at the door was an armed guard. That has never happened. Now, this this area is one of the most affluent in the Kansas City area, you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and I mean, it, it, it's populated by, uh, you know, that, that store, um, is, uh, you know, doctors and lawyers and then chiefs and soccer moms and things like that. And, uh, the idea that they th are expecting any kind of trouble, you know, there, uh, tells you something because companies don't spend extra money on security when they don't have to. And so something is telling them that they feel more comfortable with an armed security guard at the door at eight o'clock in the morning in one of the most affluent areas of the city. Okay. That's telling you something. Uh, the general attitude that I see around here, people who are, um, of course, you know, guns and ammo, they're just running out the door everywhere. If you can find anything, um, no surprise to those of us who bought ours a long time ago, right? Um, Remember me saying how uh, some time ago in, in preparedness and investing, uh, every time you go through the through a store, pick up a couple of boxes of twenty twos because they're going to go up a lot a lot faster and higher than your four hundred one k. Well, guess what? That's right. If you've got twenty two, if you've got two two three, if you pretty much in your nine mil forty forty five, uh, pretty soon you're going to see those investments pay off if you want to you know let loose of any of them. Uh, anyway, people are uh, people who were not concerned last week, who blew this off, you know, who scoffed, you know, the ones who are, or who who mistake cynicism for realism and worldliness, you know. Oh, you all are just so silly and stupid, you know. Well, you know what? They're starting to worry, and the ones who were worried last week are starting to get frantic, off the walls. Um. Uh, Seemed like there were a couple of more things that I was going to put in here, but I think those were the majors. Uh, they keep talking about uh, what kind of um, of a relief package. You know, we got all everybody up there in Washington now is fighting over who who can give away the most money. You know, should we give every family a thousand dollars? Should we give every Adult a thousand dollars. Should we give every every person in a family a thousand dollars? Should we give everybody in a family a thousand dollars every month until this thing stops? And you know, there are some people who are projecting, and I won't take a lot of time trying to remember who it was, but it was some fairly reputable organization who was uh, um, who was saying they they anticipated this to go on for eighteen months. Whatever it is. Oh, well, that, that, that's a lot of money. Not that it means anything since we're $23 trillion in debt anyway, and they just print it up. But everybody's all, all excited now about how much money they're going to get. Well, we shouldn't need it, right? And I feel for those people. Those people, like we talked about in the service sector, restaurants, bars, hotels, small businesses are going to be going under. You know, if, if, if you don't need it, you're not going to get it, and that means that the people who are in businesses that are in the wants instead of the needs are going to be losing their jobs, businesses, and having a hard time. So I'm sorry for them. I don't mean to make light of that, but as preppers, I know, we hate the word. As uh, self-reliant people, uh, we shouldn't need that, and we don't. And um, But we're going to soon be living in a world full of people who do need it. And that's going to be a different world. It's already a different world, isn't it? It's going to be a different one. So anyway, I think I'll, I'll conclude it with that. Uh, I'm going to go make the kids pancakes. And we're going to have a nice, relaxing day around here and just kind of keep up on things. And I think I'll do some writing. And uh, we'll just see how the rest of this day goes. And I'll come back and talk to you a little bit tomorrow. I will say, I've never really said this, but uh, it's it's, you know, we need to be getting the word out. So if you... Um, you know, if you have friends that need to be tuned up a little bit or shared with, um, share these videos, share the other guys' videos, get this, get this thing expanded a little bit. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to, uh, expand our influence amongst the general population who now is more receptive to it. So, you know, uh, Bob and Jane and those who weren't, uh, who weren't really on board before, you know, it's a good chance to say, Hey, let me send you this, this video. It's kind of, Makes a little bit of sense. See what you think, and this might help you kind of 
you know, get ready for what's coming. So anyway, I'm going off to cook my pancakes. You all have a great day. And remember that we prepare well in order to live well uh, tomorrow. And, and those preparations now are kind of going into a, a new dimension. So uh, uh, keep at it, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.